Are you ready to take your real estate investing business to the next level? Well, you're in the right place. This is the Real Estate Investing Morning Show. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. With your mentors, Wayne and Gabby. Good morning and welcome to the Real Estate Investing Morning Show. Today is Monday, February 5th, 2024. The weather today will be a high of minus 5 degrees in Edmonton, minus 3 degrees in Calgary, 7 degrees in Vancouver, minus 1 degree in Saskatoon, and 5 degrees in Toronto. Uh, a little snowy out there today. Well, got a little bit of snow in yeah. Alberta. I uh, see Charles is in the live... Uh live show here and he's saying uh snowy good morning snowy good morning to you charles yeah we uh we made a trip down to calgary yesterday and um i think gabby jinxed it so we're, we're driving <laughs> and she's like oh my gosh is this not like the perfect weather to be driving in I was, I was like this is I, th I think i said something along the lines of this is the most bizarre winter driving weather i've ever experienced literally bare roads bare dry. roads just cruise control <laughs> yeah. You know, set it to your favorite setting and just just take that nice, easy, boring drive from Edmonton to Calgary um, for the Real Estate Investing Masters Calgary networking event. What was it? 20 minutes later, we start getting the, the little bit of snow, a little bit of snow. And then, yeah, from Red Deer all the way to Calgary, I'm white knuckling because it is so incredibly slippery and yeah. there are cars all over the place in the ditch. And uh, as soon as we get into Calgary, I mean, it's just like it's it's no longer icy. Then now it's just like it, it's just fishtails everywhere. Yeah, just just thick piles snow. of snow everywhere. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it, it's we haven't had any real significant snow this year. Yeah, yeah, and the ride back was um, even worse because the storm was moving up north into Edmonton, so yeah. it just continued to snow everywhere. Yeah, it was, so then the whole yeah. trip on the way back was was bad. Yeah, lots of cars in the ditch last night. It uh, it was. Uh, a little bit slower on the way home. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was tough to keep my eyes open at the, at the end of it. That 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 trip from Calgary to Edmonton at night is terrible. Yeah. For those of you guys that don't know, it's one road, it's Highway Two, and there's nothing. <laughs> it's just dark and straight. And at nighttime, when you got a little bit of snow and you're just like, you really have to pay attention. It's like you start seeing things too, right? When you're like a little bit tired. Yeah. Pretty sure I saw elves. <laughs> uh, Paul in the comments here says, lucky we're not out east. Yeah, they got a massive snowstorm. I'm actually just waiting uh, to hear from my mom that she's, whether or not she's landed in Nova Scotia, in Halifax. Um, she was supposed to fly out Friday when their uh, snowstorm hit, and she got delayed until she flew out last night, but I haven't heard anything. So okay. yeah, I literally just texted her before the show started saying, hey, like, where are you at? You alive? You there? What's going on? So, okay. Yeah. Well, hope hopefully everyone's okay out there in, uh, in Nova Scotia area. Big they storm. just got they just got uh, consistent snow for several okay. days. So yeah, it's not nothing crazy. Just but, hard yeah. for planes. Hard for planes and just a lot of snow accumulation. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So big reason why we uh, were heading down to Calgary um, yesterday was uh, like a. It was for the the real estate investing masters uh, Calgary networking event, which was great, which was really great. We had about what about thirty people showing up, yep. something like that. Yep. Um, lots of new faces. Um, it was <laughs> it's funny. Um, it, I've just gotten so comfortable. <clears throat> uh, this is why branding is so important. <laughs> I got so comfortable with just like everyone listening to the podcast, and nobody ever asked me what I do anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and yesterday was the first time in a while some people were just asking to so tell me about yourself and i'm like uh uh <laughs> i do real estate investing i have a rental portfolio i have i do private mortgages um we do rent to owns fix and flips but not much lately because the market's a little saturated i just felt like it was the first time i've ever went to a networking event i was i didn't have anything and I was just so out of practice. And to be completely honest with you, 
I hate doing introductions like that because yeah. it's I, I I don't like it any more than you do, guys. Trust me, I promise you. Um, but if you if you put yourself out there and that you know everybody knows you before they meet you, it makes things so much easier. Yesterday was a little difficult when I think two people asked me and uh, I didn't I I stumbled like, through it. Stumbled through it. It was, it was actually kind of <laughs> embarrassing. Um. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, did you did you get asked? Uh, no. Well, for fuck's sake. <laughs> Were you hiding behind me? Is that what was going on? Um, a, a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. It was a really, it was a really cool networking event. So we had it at um, uh, two of our mentees, Adam and Vanessa. They just fin- literally just finished a fix and flip project in Calgary, and they did an amazing job. And uh, so we held a. We had a networking event there, I want to say like August of last year yep. um, when they were getting started. And now it's all fully completed. It's mm-hmm. done and it looks amazing. And people were able to obviously be there for the first one and then they can come back and see what it looks like afterwards. And what a transformation. Just absolutely beautiful. Stunning. They did an absolutely incredible job. Yeah. The design, like the the details and the design and everything was just, it was over the top. Wonderful. I like doing our networking events at that at fix and flips i've you know we've we've done other places and stuff like that and i don't know like we can rent a hall or something or other but it's almost like when you rent a place a space it's like people are expecting to a big presentation mm-hmm. speakers and stuff like that there's not enough networking at, at those events and that's the whole purpose of going to those events is to network yeah is to get to know other people to reconnect to build a community to you know just to build your your network and uh, that's why I like doing it the fix and flips because people can just kind of walk around, they can chit chat, they can grab a water and a coffee or a donut or something like that, and uh, and just chit chat, which is yeah. which I like. So, um, in fact, we're actually going to be we're going to be announcing this after the break. Here, we have another one coming up in Edmonton here next month or this month, this month. Listen up, we'll, Edmontonians. We'll be getting uh, we'll be getting to that very shortly after the break. Here, um, I want to get back to. Um, uh, fix and flip uh, tips here and a little bit after the break. I've got a plan. Um, we talked about it a little bit last night uh, at the event about over-renovating. Not to say that Adam over-renovated nope. and Vanessa, um, but we were talking about over-renovating and the 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 fear or the um, the uncertainty of how much is too much or how much is not enough mm-hmm. when it comes to fix and flips. So we're going to be talking about some common areas or some common spots that people tend to over renovate on fix and flips today. Uh, but before we get into that, uh, does anyone have any questions in the live show? Cause I'm going to say, I'm going to do something <laughs> and then a big question is going to come and then I'm not going to do it because we're broadcasting live. For those of you guys that don't know, we broadcast live every morning at 6am mountain time on the Podbean app. You can listen to the show on iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, whichever. Uh, but you can also join in live at 6 a.m. and bring bring your questions. We are the only community and podcast that provide free coaching every single day, every weekday. All you need to do is you need to get up at 6 a.m. Mountain Time. If you do, you come in, you bring your questions, we will answer them for you for free. Anything you want to know about real estate investing. I think we've got just about everything figured out. We've been doing this long enough. How long have we been doing this now? Over a decade. I, I, it's hard to to kind of nail down the actual date because we were like we were dabbling in real estate investing in the early years, but we didn't know what the fuck we were doing. <laughs> and and it's like some people say like oh, I've been investing for three years, but the same kind of thing like they were dabbling. So I I hate to I like we weren't sophisticated you know <laughs> trained real estate investors in the early days, but I always just say over a decade. We've been doing this for over a decade now. We've done just about everything and we've taken courses on just about everything. Uh, we got answers for you. Um, all you need to do is ask. Just take advantage of the free coaching. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's why I was uh, you know, putting that open invitation to you guys. If you guys got any questions, put them in there. Uh, while you're working on that, uh, I got some stuff in the news today. Oh, do we? Uh, government of Canada announces, it looks, sounds like it was yesterday, uh, two-year extension to ban on foreign ownership of Canadian housing. Oh, no shit. Yep. Yep, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. <laughs> oh, wow. That's very interesting. Uh, very professional show. <laughs> no shit! <laughs> 
<laughs> Gab's got a cigarette hanging out of her mouth. <laughs> you fucking kidding me? Uh, today, which was yesterday, February 4th, you know, from Ottawa, um, the Honorable... Um, does anyone know how to say her name yet? She's She's been in the news a lot. So, Christia? Nobody knows how to say her name. It looks like Krista to me. Krista? Christia? It's just a fancy way of spelling Krista. If you say so. Uh, Krista Freeland, Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Finance, announced the federal government's intent to extend by an additional two years the existing ban on foreign ownership of Canadian housing. For years, foreign money has been coming into Canada to buy up real residential real estate, increasing housing affordability concerns in cities across the country, and particularly uh, in major urban centers. Foreign ownership has also fueled worries about Canadians being priced out of housing markets in cities and towns across the country. Uh, as part of using all possible tools to make housing more affordable for Canadians, the ban on foreign ownership of Canadian housing, which is currently set to expire on January 1st, 2025, will be extended to January 1st, 2027. Your thoughts? Christia. I looked it up. <laughs> We'll get back to Gabby. Uh, foreign commercial enterprises <laughs> and people who are not Canadian. Christia. Yes. Christia. Uh, Christia. <laughs> Christia. When you meet somebody, you're supposed to repeat their name yeah. in, oh, your, yeah. in, in your head that five times. I'm bad that going in and out. Um, that's one I'm going to mix up. <laughs> back to the article. Uh, foreign commercial enterprises and people who are not Canadian citizens or permanent residents will continue to be prohibited from purchasing residential property in Canada. The ban on foreign ownership of Canadian housing and this two-year extension is just one part of the federal government's economic plan to make housing more affordable for Canadians. The federal government is taking bold action and working with all orders of government to build more homes faster and put home ownership back within reach for Canadians. Uh, 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 there's a couple quotes here, some quick facts. None of them seem relevant. Your thoughts on this? Do you think it's good? Do you think it's not fair? Not fair, eh? For for the foreigners? Oh my gosh, Gabby. What? <laughs> what? It's a foreign ban. They are foreigners. You're acting as if I said something inappropriate. <laughs> Just asking. You sounded very Is... Albertan there. <laughs> Oh my God. For the people who live in different lands, like, what do you want me to say? You Is that what you're asking? If I think it's unfair just, to them? <laughs> just, I'm just painting a terrible picture of you. That's all. <laughs> um, I mean, no, I think that, I don't know, like, I don't have a strong opinion on this, but I think that like, if they can, you know, we've seen different ways that they're trying to control the housing crisis. Yeah. And, you know, banning people from foreign lands from purchasing property within Canada is the least, um, the least, has the least effect on us as Canadians. Yes. Is that a good way to put it? Yes. You know, because instead of, you know, banning us from running Airbnbs and, you know, uh, all these other kind of hammers that seem to be trying to come down. This one, like, I mean, yeah. I I, I agree. Yeah. I'm a capitalist. I, except I, I'm a capitalist. I also I also know that I also know that um, it's more complicated than that. Yeah. I'm not I'm not so simple that I think that that's just all that it is. So I'm a capitalist, and I like to look for opportunities. I like to. On ways that I can better myself, better my family, better my businesses. Uh, this does not affect that. However, it's things like these that worry me. Um, I suppose if I were um, an investor in a different country and I really saw opportunity in Canada, I'd be pretty fucking pissed. Oh. Um, but you like you look at the investment community in Canada, and like everybody's they're leaving Canada and they're yeah. trying to <laughs> invest in other places, right? Yeah. And uh, I, I just, I, I'm trying to, I, here's, 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 here's how most people look at it. It, it. it literally, this is how, 
I'm, I'm being careful. When people think of foreign buyers, they think of uh, people from China buying up um, houses, expensive houses in Vancouver mm -hmm. and Toronto. That's pretty much what people are worried about and increasing the um, or decreasing the affordability mm -hmm. of those areas and increasing the prices. That's generally what it was, what they started doing that for years ago, two years ago. You know what I mean? That was the big thing. Vancouver and Toronto are so overpriced because the people are coming in and buying up houses um, and they're trying to shelter money from China. That's, I don't have a whole lot of reference material or evidence in that, but that's just generally speaking what most people thought. I think now it's more related to the housing um, shortage and uh, an affordability crisis. Um, so it, it makes sense for an extension now, right? It's a, it's a smart play, but I don't know. Uh, that level of control does scare me because it limits opportunities in the future or there's the potential that they can limit opportunities in the future. Then again, playing it from the other side, um, it's one of those things that like, Wayne, shut up. It's like, it's the one thing that everybody needs is a, is a warm place to live and we need to keep affordability um, low so that everybody can have a warm place to live. So um, I'm open to having this debate on either side. Uh, I, I truly do believe that. I just, I just wish we weren't in this situation mm -hmm. so that it wasn't almost necessary that they needed to do this. I do, I do agree with you as well. I'm very conflicted on this, as you can tell. <laughs> I do agree with you as well. I think that this is one of those, those areas that they can control as a, a federally um, that doesn't really affect us as Canadians. Yeah. It's because because they're, they're, they're affecting someone else and not us. It's kind of like, uh, it doesn't really matter as long as it doesn't affect me. But the second they start touching the short-term rentals, everybody's like, whoa, 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 whoa. It's yeah. my livelihood. Yeah. But it's, but it's, yeah, I'm, I'm just totally, I just totally see it as like, of course, like protect your country. Like other people don't need to be coming in and doing things in our country that are, is affecting Investing us. Investing in our real estate? If it's making, if it's, if, if it's to the detriment of our people. Yes. Yes. But you're, you got to keep one hat at a time, Gabby, one hat at a time, because at the same time. Look, I'm not out investing in other people's countries, so I don't give a shit. Shut me down from so buying in Mexico. Saying, I you... don't care. Shut me down from buying in Belize. I don't care. I'm not doing it. Okay. So <laughs> are you saying that if you're going to be investing in real estate, you should only be investing in your own country? No. Okay. Invest where you're allowed to until you're not allowed to anymore. Then pivot. <laughs> be adaptable. But that's what I don't like. What? I don't well, I don't like the inconsistency. Life is about of it. adapting. I know. But I like clear rules. <laughs> invest there till you can't invest there anymore. Yeah. Mm. It's it's like life. I don't know. It's like playing Monopoly and then you're fucking going around the board and you're you're finally, you know, catching up to 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 fucking Beano Railroad and suddenly someone tells you, Oh yeah, you can't buy that anymore. Like for fuck's sakes. I just rolled double specifically to get on there. So now I can't buy it. I bought the other three with the whole intention of buying the fourth railroad so that I can get $200 rent. Now you're telling me I can't bothers me, bothers me. I want fucking clear rules and I want to know that they're not going to be changed. Just saying I, as a, just bothers me a little bit. They're going to do this. What else are they going to do? I don't typically wave my finger at the government very often. Normally, I'm very accepting as long as the rules are clear. But lately, the rules have been getting moved around quite a bit. And it just concerns me about other possible rules in the future. <sighs> Joint ventures. Mm -hmm. Can you fucking watch it? Joint ventures are going within the next five years. I know it keep hearing about more and more people getting fucked over. Mm -hmm. You watch those security commissions, the securities commission or the securities laws are going to change in each of our provinces. I fucking guarantee it. Yeah. And you guys see my article on Friday. Yep. That's what we were talking about. Um, the week previous to that, I said, there's a lot of multifamily buildings coming up on the market here pretty soon. Yeah. Uh, if you guys are curious about the article that I was uh, referring to, go to the Real Estate Investing Masters Facebook group and you'll see the article that I shared. It finally got released publicly. Mm -hmm. um, quite a few people um, 
getting unpaid. And it's funny when I released that article, I got a ton of DMs from people telling me about other people who are not getting paid as well in Canada currently. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of people that aren't talking. The amount of unpaid promissory notes and unpaid joint venture partners right now in Canada is crazy. And stuff like this happened. This has nothing to do with the article that we were reading, but I'm saying that, you know, when, when, when stuff starts happening and the government needs to step in, they will step in, which bothers me. Um, because they, there is the possibility that they could start the securities commissions um, or, or the securities laws could change. Um, and they can crack down more on joint ventures and, and people off, offering <sighs> fixed guarantees of investments and stuff like that. Okay, guys. So what's the lesson here? Don't fuck around. Don't. Well, yeah, don't fuck around. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. Are you saying We're I should invest in Belize? No, but oh. if things can change at any given time, don't put all your eggs in one basket. If you're strictly, all you do is Airbnb, I'm the Airbnb master. Look at me. And then Airbnb gets shut down, as we've seen things can happen quite quickly. Uh, then w what are you left with? Nothing. Yeah. Nothing, right? Yeah. diversify don't put all your eggs in one basket if you're the joint venture king or queen what are you going to do when the hammer comes down and you're not allowed to join venture anymore yeah well you know fix and flips a great example um people, someone was asking me uh yesterday how come you're not doing any fix and flips right now it doesn't work in my market right now right yeah. however for the two years previously it, it previous it did right so you got to make sure that you're flexible um even our even our um, our private mortgage business kind of dried up a little bit with the interest rates going up as high as they did. We're only taking on a certain amount of clients right now, where we we basically just had like we were approving everyone that 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 fit the criteria previously when the interest rates were so low. But as soon as the interest rates went up, we're like, yeah, we're going to be a little more selective on our clientele now. So you got to be able to pivot and make, uh, as Gabby said, make sure that you've got other sources of income as well. If you're putting all of your eggs into one basket. Fix and flips work sometimes, and then they don't work in other times. Rent to own works sometimes, and it doesn't work other times. Private mortgages, same thing, right? So make sure that you got flexibility and that you, when you're building your real estate investing business, you have the ability to be flexible um, as things change. But we're completely off topic. Um, it's getting a little ranty. But um, it's just a reminder because I keep talking about that joint venture thing, and I keep talking about how just be careful because as more and more of these stories keep popping up every day, um, and we keep hearing about more and more people getting screwed over. Um, yes, yeah. <clears throat> Sorry. We're gonna we're gonna start to see some changes here. So mm -hmm. just be careful and just keep your finger on the pulse. Anyways, we got to take a quick little commercial break here and we're gonna get back to uh, the conversation that we said we were gonna talk about, which is um, <laughs> we got really far away from it. <laughs> uh, fix and flips and how to go about making sure that you do not over renovate. So we're going to give you a list of items that people typically over renovate on their fix and flips. Um, sometimes it makes sense. Sometimes not so much or sometimes, yeah, sometimes it makes sense and sometimes not so much. Um, but these are the common things that uh, people typically over renovate and uh, we'll get to that right after the commercial break. Well, 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 investors, you're looking for some lucrative off-market opportunities, but all the good deals seem to have dried up on the MLS. What do you do? You go to Legere Homebuyers, a Calgary premium wholesaling company. That's what you do. Whether you're looking for the next fix and flip, buy and hold, burr project, or redevelopment, you'll find the best off-market deals with Legere Homebuyers. And don't worry, Legere does the work for you. Join the buyers list on calgaryoffmarket.ca and edmontonoffmarket.ca today. Are you just starting to build your real estate portfolio? Kirkwood and Brennan are real estate investors and mortgage brokers who understand real estate investing. Not only do they help you get a mortgage, but they help you build a better real estate portfolio. Take the time now so you have more time later. Check them out at kbmortgages.ca or call 778-847-0552. That's 778-847-0552. It's time to sell your house or buy a new one or an additional one. But where do you start? 
Do you drive around neighborhoods hoping to spot for sale signs? Do you take a shot in the dark with a real estate listing website? Or do you go with an experienced and focused realtor? Nazarene Legere is the licensed expert realtor you've been hoping you would find. Working in Calgary and surrounding areas, whether you're buying, selling, or investing, Nazarene will help you bridge the gap between you and your real estate goals. Find Nazarene Legere online at houseandhomeyyc.net. And we are back. Uh, what's Annette going on about in the comments? I don't know. She said, these ad voices kill me. Love it. <laughs> uh, yes. Okay. So uh, one last thing I wanted to say before we move on was that uh, if you guys are planning on buying or selling in the Edmonton area, whether that be you know for a home or an investment property, definitely give our friends at Calvin Realty a call. Uh, they're pretty amazing, but uh, don't take our word for it. Uh, how about we check out a Google review and see what some of their clients are saying? That's it. All right. Uh, ba, 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 never prepared. I'm never prepared. Uh, we are super happy we went with Calvin Realty as our listing agent. He was informative and looked after our best interests. Our home sold fast for more than what we expected. Thanks to Calvin. Beauty. Indeed. Indeed. <laughs> Some upcoming events as well. What are they? <laughs> <laughs> You have the paper in front of you. <laughs> Don't look at me. Okay. Uh, tonight, tonight at 5 p.m. Mountain Time, uh, we have live training with Steve Son. If uh, you guys know who Steve is, uh, he's the uh, managing partner of Fingo Bookkeeping Attacks. He was on the podcast last Thursday. Thursday. Uh, tonight, live training in the Real Estate Investing Masters Facebook group. We're going to be going over getting or we're going to be getting you prepared uh, for filing your taxes for your rental properties. Pretty sweet. Or for your real estate business yeah. in general. This should be exciting for you guys. And you guys should all be attending this because, um, I mean, the feedback after Thursday was incredible. So make sure you show up tonight. There's going to be lots of lots more tips. Yeah. yeah. And this is getting uh, delayed more than what I'm comfortable with. But um, mark off in your calendar February 24th as well. Uh, we did a little teaser last week asking who would like to have a bookkeeping and taxes workshop or would be like to be involved in one. Um, February 24th, bookkeeping and taxes workshop, co-hosted by Steve as well mm -hmm. uh, from Fingo Bookkeeping and Tax. And uh, yes, full details are going to be out any minute. <laughs> <laughs> so delayed. But you know what? We, uh, we were having a conversation with Steve and we we're like, we got to do a workshop. And he's like, I know. And so we, we're going to do the live training tonight, which is free. But we're like, we got to do a workshop because um, as we started talking more about um, taxes, the amount of people that are reaching out being like, I don't know what I'm doing for taxes. Who do I talk to? Like, mm -hmm. who do you? And I've been saying, call Fingo, right? Um, but everyone's just, it just seems like nobody really knows what the heck they're doing when it comes to bookkeeping taxes. Yeah. It's and tough. It's, it's, it's just a lack of education. education. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So we're gonna we see we see an opportunity to to teach people, and we're gonna we're gonna do that. Uh, hopefully, we can solve some problems and get people some more cash in their pocket. Nice. Okay. Other upcoming events. Uh, literally, uh, this is another thing that you can expect to be announced today. Um, if you liked the Real Estate Investing Masters networking event in Calgary yesterday, then uh, how about Edmonton? How about it? Uh, how, how about <laughs> that? Uh, February eighteenth from two to four p.m. Okay. In Edmonton, we'll be getting you some more details on that any minute. <laughs> uh, it's going to be co-hosted by Matt Bordian and Taylor Rushbrook Dickey. Uh, that is going to be at another fix and flip in Edmonton. Uh, they just picked this one up. Mm, two weeks ago, maybe? A week ago, maybe? I don't know. Taylor's here. Taylor, give us some information. <laughs> don't wait. She might be busy. What do you mean? <laughs> okay anyways we'll, we'll get you that information um but yeah it's going to be at a it's going to be at a real fix and flip project uh this one should be probably in if it's two weeks from now they, they got took possession january 22nd reno is starting today okay so it'll probably be in late prep stages by then mm -hmm. but the way they operate yeah, and how fast they move fuck, flooring might be in who knows yeah it's hard to say they're quick. They are quick. Um, they did a successful fix and flip here a few months back. Yeah. Made a nice chunk of change. 
Uh, I'm interested to see this property. So that's coming up again, February 18th, uh, 2 to 4 p.m. And you can find the details for that. Well, we'll, we'll release them tomorrow, but uh, in the Real Estate Investing Masters Facebook uh, page. What else we got going on? Is that it? That's all I got on my list. <laughs> I feel like there's so much coming up. Like, okay, so there's there's stuff that we've released and then there's stuff that we're doing and we're planning. Um, this next five months is going to be absolutely bonkers yeah. for meetups and events. It's yeah. going to be crazy. We're even planning a mortgage financing workshop for next month, which we're going to be announcing here any minute. <laughs> so we got bookkeeping and taxes for the end of this month, the last Saturday of February. And we've got a mortgage financing workshop with Keaton Kirkwood planned for the last Saturday of March. Um, side note, as part of the Real Estate Investing Master's mentorship program, um, we do monthly workshops on the last Saturday of every month. Normally, they're exclusive to the REI Master's mentorship program. However, lately, um, some of these topics were like, we gotta, we gotta do them publicly. And I was talking with Steve. Steve's like, yeah, we gotta do it publicly. I was talking to Keaton. Keaton's like, yeah, we gotta do it publicly. Um, these are, these are the types of workshops and, and, and content that not many people are talking about. And as we, as we roam through the real estate investing community and world, what? Interesting word. Keep going. I just. I don't, you know, like through the prairies. Yeah, I, really, like out in, the, out in the pasture. <laughs> yeah. As we roam, we have conversations and we hear things from people and we're like, okay, clearly we need some more education on this, mm -hmm. right? So we got a lot of stuff coming up. End of February, we got the bookkeeping, bookkeeping and taxes workshop. End of March, we have the mortgage financing workshop with Keaton as well. And then we got some stuff coming up in June. My golly, it's going to be, it's going to be a good year for real estate investors mm -hmm. um, because by golly, do we have some opportunities coming up. And we want to make sure everybody's good and educated and competent to make those decisions quickly. Awesome. Fix and flips. Yeah. Let's talk about it. Fix and flips. So like I said, we were at a fix and flip uh, networking event there uh, yesterday. And um, we were talking a lot about uh, how did you make the decision to do this? And how did you make the decision to do that? Why did you do this? Why did you not do that? Um, there's never a right or wrong answer. And... I'm just going to say this again, just in case Adam was in the bathroom when I said this earlier, or Vanessa. Um, this is not referring to what they did on their project. Um, because what you're going to notice, Adam, is a lot of the things on this list are, are things that you did. and But you did it correctly. Yeah, they, they did it to uh, fit what needed to be done in their neighborhood and um, <clears throat> for the price point that they were exactly yeah. Exactly. And... Um, you know, this kind of is, is real. Uh, it's, it ties into the question that, that Charles had here as well earlier. And he said, what's the simplest way to figure out the ARV for your exit strategy? And for fix and flips, Charles, um, uh, what you do is you talk to your investor focused um, realtor. So in Calgary, I uh, talked to uh, Natherine Legere, uh, Edmonton, talked to Calvin Realty and ask them, hey, I'm planning on buying this house. I'm planning on doing this kind of work to it, what's my after repaired value going to be? Um, and what they'll do is they will pull up all the recent properties that are the same lot size, square footage, bedrooms, pretty much apples for apples to apples, same type of property, but something that has been renovated, fixed, like it's been flipped and sold uh, to the same finishings that you are planning on doing. And whatever that property sold for apples to apples, will be what your property will be worth afterwards. Mm -hmm. So how prices, how, how values are determined are based off of what other properties like yours have sold for. And that's how appraisers figure it out. And that's how realtors do their CMAs, um, comparative market analysis. So that's, that's the simplest way is, is to call your investor focused realtor and ask them based off of the work that you're planning on doing to find out what the after repair value is. Now, this also helps with the topic that we're going to be discussing today is that <clears throat> what things do you renovate? What things do you add when you're doing a fix and flip, right? What things will add value? What things won't? And what things, if it's not going to add value, is it worth the money to add it, mm -hmm. right? Is it worth the money to spend on something uh, if it's not going to change the value? 
or it's not going to change the desirability. And the way to know is to run, have your investor focused realtor like Netherin, run the comparables, see what other properties have sold for, and also see what they did. And then what you want to do is you want to compare it to theirs as much as possible. So that way, when a buyer comes in and is interested in your property, and they ask their realtor to do a CMA, they're going to pull all the other properties that have sold recently. And they're going to see, okay, this property had a single garage. The, the subject property has a single garage. Okay, cool. This property is 1,100 square feet. This property is 1,100 square feet. This one has two bedrooms upstairs, two bedrooms downstairs. This property has two bedrooms upstairs, downstairs. This one has quartz, gutter tops. That one has quartz, right? If it's the same, then you can justify the price that you're listing it for. But if you only put laminate countertops and the other property had quartz, they're going to be like, well, this one had quartz. So therefore yours is worth less. Make sense? So some some common spots, there's a there's a great area right there. Um, some people will uh, will overspend on countertops. Yeah. I think that um, I, countertops though, I'd say are, um, I mean, if we're talking about flipping, um, then you should be very likely, unless you're doing like a lipstick in a, in a, a worse off neighborhood. But if you're flipping a property, you're more than likely going to be looking at spending more money on countertops and not putting laminate in. Quartz or granite. Yeah. And so that's the question, quartz or granite. And, you know, you can get the the um, moderate kind of just like sparkly uh, quartz compared to the ones with the big, crazy, like, uh, statement designs in them and stuff. So there's, there's a huge swing in prices when it comes yeah. to to, to countertops. There is. And in this situation, I would really look at what is what are your best sold comparables and what did they do and trying to trying to copy that. And not not spending extra if you don't have to. What about exterior? Uh what specifically do you mean? Well, there's a few things we can break it down for. Let's let's start with landscaping. Yeah. I mean, again, uh I I think that landscaping is very neighborhood dependent. So if you go neighborhood to neighborhood, you're going to notice that, you know, in the more high end neighborhoods, people actually spend a lot of money and a lot of focus on their landscaping. Whereas in kind of mid range neighborhoods, I'd say it's less important to make a really big statement with the landscaping. Simplicity is fine as long as it's cleaned up and and looks tidy and there's not overgrown trees and bushes that kind of like take away from the appeal of the house. Yeah. Yeah. Some people do like the 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 shrubs they like the mm -hmm. trees and stuff like that for the shade they want to yeah. you know they can picture themselves hanging out in the yard but at the same time you know how how old is that tree is it leaning over is it is that big tree in the front of the yard actually preventing you from is it affecting your curb appeal because you can't see the nice new siding that you mm -hmm. put on yeah which leads me into you know should you replace the siding or should you paint the wood should you paint the stucco mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, uh, almost like it's funny because almost all of these things, like you should take your, your sold comparables very seriously. Like those ones that your realtor finds that are your direct comparables. Um, you should take those very seriously and see what they're, they've been doing because that's what they're going to be looking at and being like, well, this one, they, they put all new vinyl siding and this other one look like they just painted the stucco. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That's going to take away from what you're trying to sell your property at. Painting stucco can cost what anywhere from two to five thousand mm -hmm. dollars, depending on your painter or whether you're doing it yourself, you, yeah. whether you're using a sprayer, whether you're using a roller, um, and then putting new siding just on the front can be like five or six thousand dollars, but doing the whole house can be anywhere from ten to fifteen thousand mm -hmm. dollars. Um, I see a lot of people they'll do that, they'll redo the siding, but once you redo the siding, then you got to do redo the the soffit and fascia, fascia yeah. because the color doesn't match anymore because it was brown soffit and fascia and eaves jobs, and now you're putting up black siding or gray siding, right? Now you got to redo all that, and your eaves drops are going to cost you another twelve hundred bucks, and your fascia and your and your soffits are going to cost you about two thousand bucks. See how it it spirals out, all because you were trying to have a nice curb appeal, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So some of those decisions are very hard to make in the moment and not only do you have to pay attention to what your comparables had, but also taking into account that if I, if I pull this string, are you going to unravel the whole sweater? Yeah. Right. Or your underwear <laughs> socks. What? <laughs> sweater. Good sweater? To okay, that sweater. Yeah. Sweater's a good one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I should have started with underwear. Um, <laughs> what about adding an addition? 
that's that's a that's a big one i see a lot of people they're like oh let's add a second story or oh let's add a uh another yeah so side of the house we had a third bedroom yeah adding additions means you are trying to put yourself in a whole other um price point yeah whole like you're you're taking it from what it is to something different and so you need to be really sure that your neighborhood supports it and that um that the cost that you're going to put into it is actually going to raise it that much money yeah, yeah so that takes a lot more like that's that's a way deeper dive into and a lot riskier, right? Yeah. Yeah. Cause you're bringing it from something that it isn't into a whole different world. Talk to Nat, talk to Calvin and make sure that, yeah, you're don't just do it because you think it'd be a cool idea. Oh yeah. God, and, no. Oh, that's actually, that's a really hot tip for fixing flippers. Don't do anything. Cause you think it's cool. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. It, this has nothing to do with emotions. This is actually very strategic. Yeah. Fix and flips is very strategic and you have to really, truly understand um how to get top dollar and how to do it for the least amount of money mm -hmm. right? and in a neighborhood that supports it and sometimes like um sometimes you might find that there's there's two or three different options for a fiction flip i can i can add the addition i can put siding all the way around i can add a second story and i could you know like gabby said push it into a different price point or push it into a different comparable like suddenly you know your 1100 square foot bungalow was being compared to all other square foot uh, 1100 square foot bungalows but now when you had a second story now you're into the two stories and now you're more comparable to some of the higher end properties that are on the other side of the neighborhood that are in the millions see now you've kind of pushed yourself into a different market or you can just renovate the existing house that you have right and with high-end finishing spend one hundred and fifty thousand dollars, make it look beautiful or you can spend sixty thousand dollars replacing the flooring and the and the kitchen cabinets and the paint and just sell it as is. And there's going to be different price points in different markets for, for each, each of those. those. Yeah. And and that's a that's a tough decision when you get a property. Um, ideally, you want to get a property severely under like heavily under market value. That's in like really terrible shape, and you have a blank canvas. You know what I mean? You can look at it and be like, okay, I got option one. I can clean this place up and sell it quick. Option two, I can spend $150,000, make it look beautiful. Option three, I can spend $225,000 and I can add an, uh, uh, an addition that has um, a drive up for my, the Lamborghini with an elevator that goes up to the second floor. That was an exaggeration. You're supposed to giggle. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But, funny story. I remember years and years and years ago, I think it might've been on um, Erwin Zetto's uh, podcast uh he had a guy on that did something like that he he tried to he did high-end renovations up on like the hamilton hill and he, he he liked to add elevators and stuff like that and like secret doors and whatnot mm -hmm. and i always just thought it was ridiculous mm -hmm. but anyways um different strokes for different folks uh what about uh feature walls feature walls is a pretty big one as well mm -hmm. um i think it's kind of necessary yeah, but. I think I think feature walls are um, great. I think that people need to realize um, what goes into them and that you can keep it pretty simple. You don't need to go crazy. Um, just having something um, that catches people's attention is I think it's important. So unless you're doing like unless you're able to go in and do a quick lipstick, like definitely you don't need to add a feature wall. But if you're if you're flipping this thing and you're doing some good work to it and bringing it into, you know, a, a different life for it, then absolutely. I think that um, feature walls are a fantastic uh, spot to spend a little bit of money. Absolutely. Yeah. Because yeah, like uh, people get into some pretty crazy designs and don't realize the amount of time that it takes uh, the contractor to do that. Um, time materials, planning, planning. Yeah. yeah. And then all those little cuts and your angles and your different things. So oh, yeah. it can, it, you can keep it simple and have the same impact. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, I to me, the more simplistic those are, the the better. I think that the all the crazy designs were kind of a quick fad that came and went. As far as true. I'm concerned. I'm not everybody though. True. And color, like just like colors, like you know, like you try and keep neutral tone colors, right? So that it, it appeals to everybody. Um, a crazy stick wall with all the designs and whichever else is almost an, an art piece mm -hmm. to, to, for some people. Yeah. And it might not be the art that they like. Mm -hmm. Um, That's so true. the simpler you keep it, um, as long as it can have that effect of being like, oh, that's nice. That's nicer than a white wall. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, but not going overboard. Mm -hmm. 
Um, cause you're going to spend money going, uh, going overboard on it. Cause you think it looks nice, but someone, it might actually deter a potential buyer yeah. when you're doing fix and flips. I loved the, um, simplicity of the feature wall that Adam and Vanessa did in their flip in Calgary there. Which one? Um, in the, uh, master bedroom. Yes. It was, um, it was so, um, uh, sorry, just like the right word is escaping me, but it was just, it was, it was so like mild. <laughs> that's all I can think of right now. Yeah. Um, where it just kind of like caught your attention and you're like, oh, that's lovely. But you weren't like, whoa, like, look at that. You know what I mean? Like it, it just like fit in so beautifully with the aesthetic and it was white. It was just, it was the same color as the walls. As, as far as I can remember, I might be sorry guys, if I'm a little off on that, but, um, it was, yeah, it was just, it was really pretty. I personally like the, the, the round molding, um, in the, in the dining room, just a very simple, um, almost like the picture frame type thing that they did there. Yes. Yeah. Very, very simple. Just yeah. like it's it's cheap, you know, trim that you go get from Home Depot and then you just staple it up, you know, or you nail it up and, and you just paint it with the wall. Mm -hmm. it, it doesn't cost very much as long as you're not going too crazy with the artsy stuff. Mm -hmm. And it, it takes a, um, a boring wall and turns it into um, something with a little bit of character. Mm -hmm. But people do go overboard on these walls yeah. and they add too many. So there's a bedroom, there's a dining room, there was a... Um, and I think there might've been something downstairs. Well, maybe not, no. but I see some people, they're like, they're doing it all over the house. And it, one, it's going to really overwhelm people. It's going to, I think it'll lose. Lose its effect. Lose its effect if it's, it's all over the place. Mm -hmm. Whereas like, if it was just one thing, it would be a focal point. And that was one thing that um, Vanessa mentioned last night. And Vanessa's um, a designer and stager and uh, hats off to her for her design in this mm -hmm. project. Yeah. Uh, but she said that she, what she was trying to do is she was trying to create focal points. Right. And for those of you guys that took our fix and flip workshop um, back in summer of last year, spring of last year, something like that. Um, we talked about that. We talked about leaving breadcrumbs. You know what I mean? Ooh, piece of candy. Ooh, piece of candy. What you want to do is you want to take them. You want to take your your potential buyers or your tenants, depending on how whatever you're renovating for uh, on a little journey. And as they walk into a room, you want to have a focal point that they that they that they focus on. And that could be. You know, and think about where it is that they're standing. Are they standing at the at the at the counter at the island? And what are they looking at? What's the focal point? Are they looking at a dead wall that's just sitting there with nothing on it, or is there, you know, a, a feature wall? Um, Got to think about that. Like, where are people going to be standing? Where's the area of focus going to be? And then when they're looking at that, um, what do they think? Mm -hmm. Right. And so another uh, thing that people over renovate sometimes on is fireplaces. Um, should that feature wall have a fireplace in it? Mm -hmm. That was a big one. A lot of people were doing the shiplap thing was a big a thing a few years ago. Yeah. Um, I think we, we, we were one of the big first people that used <laughs> shiplap and then shiplap yeah. got old. Yeah. Um, uh, shiplap with a, uh, shiplap fireplace. feature wall with a fireplace, electric fireplace underneath was, mm -hmm. um, but adding in an electric fireplace can be costly. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, depending on the, the cost of the unit you're buying. Um, how fancy you're going it could be what three, four, five hundred dollar unit. Plus you got electrical, plus you got framing, plus you got drywall, plus you got um, whatever you're going to do to that wall, shiplap and everything else or, or, or fancy sticks. Mm -hmm. I call them fancy sticks. <laughs> um, next thing you know, it's a fifteen hundred dollar wall for, to make a statement. And if you're doing all those fancy walls with your sticks and stuff, you're Think about it like this way. If you're planning on making $30,000 on that fix and flip, but you're throwing out $1,500 left, right, and center here and there and there and there. And, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to take down this tree and I'm going to add a, uh, a patio area back here. And I'm going to, I'm going to um, add a site this, this over here. And I'm going to, I'm going to take this wall down over there. And next thing you know, you spend $7,000 when you're trying to make 30, that's a huge chunk of your profits. That's 25% of your profits. Yeah. Right. And this is why we're talking about these common areas that, you know, people tend to over renovate because sometimes you need to, in order to, uh, to justify your price, cause you're trying to compare it to something else. And other times you're just spending money mm -hmm. and you're literally, literally just throwing it out the window. Mm -hmm. You know, do you need three focal points in one room? Mm -hmm. No, you only need one. And yeah. then you need to fill whatever needs to be filled. So it doesn't, the rest of it doesn't seem bare. Yeah. Um, shelving in closets. Uh, two separate things. Obviously, shelving is, you know, some people just don't put any shelving in. 
Yeah, I think that this is highly dependent on the um, price point of your property. I absolutely would not spend money on fancy built-ins and, um, you know, beautiful shelving inside closets in, say, a townhouse flip or a, um, you know, just kind of like an apartment, low, flip. Uh, yeah, apartment flip or even just like a kind of low, lower range um, house. I think unless you're getting into those higher price points, then absolutely it's expected. You're trying to get a lot of money. You're asking people to, to really buy into this like big renovation that you did. Then yes, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> but do not waste money on fancy fancy shelving in lower end because it adds up quickly. Yeah. Yeah. And it's time consuming for your contractor to be putting in. So those hours as well. Yeah, absolutely. That's, yeah. I think that's where people think, Oh, it's not that much. Just a little couple pieces of wood. They'll go run down and grab some MDF or whatever, but it's the labor. Mm -hmm. It's the labor. It's the extra things to paint. It's, it's, yeah. you know, if they spend a day on those things, I mean, how much is, how much are you paying your contractor? 80 bucks an hour, 80 bucks an hour times 10 hours is 800 bucks. 800 bucks for them to do that that day. And that's $800 of your profit. You gotta be, you gotta be conscious of it. Plus every, material. every, and that plus material. Yeah. Everything needs to be intentional. That's the whole thing. Because if you're just trying to be like, well, if this were my house, I would want this to happen. There's, there's a fine line there. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and so on the same topic of what about like, um, closets and closets can be bedroom closets, but it could also be like entryway closets, you know, the back door, the front door. And, you know, do you just leave the sliding glass doors or do you do a built in with a with a cubby and, and, a, and a sitting bench and the really nice feature wall behind the hooks and everything else and the shelf up top? Do yeah. you build custom or do you yeah. just keep sliding doors? Uh, just like my last answer, it depends on it, on uh, the the price point that you're going after. Yeah. So yeah, in a in let's call it a townhouse, I would absolutely leave if the if the glass doors were, you know, um, as long as they weren't, you know, beat up and they were actually like nice, you know, kind of glass mirror doors, then I would leave them. Yeah. Um, but even so, like if I needed to replace them, I would just replace them with like bifolds or something in that sort of situation. I would not be putting in custom built um, bench and, and hooks and stuff in that type of renovation. You know what but I again, if you're like, if, if you're going for the big renovation in the, in the fancy neighborhood, 100%. If you need to get that top yeah. dollar, yeah. yeah. You know what I want to do at the end of this? Uh, we're about halfway through, so I got to hurry it up. But at the <laughs> end of this, I want to I want to just quickly run the numbers, pull a calculator out, and see if you were to do all of these things that I mentioned, how much extra your renovation would be. Um, kitchen cabinets. There's a big difference between IKEA kitchen cabinets, Home Depot kitchen cabinets, and say custom kitchen cabinets. Yeah. I remember uh, we had one of our mentees uh, a while back. Uh, he wasn't asking for help when he should have. Um, so this is not my coaching. Um, but I remember he wanted to do his own thing and he's like, I just want to get my own quotes. And I checked in with him to see how things were going. And he goes, yeah, I just got my quote for custom kitchen cabinets. And I'm like, whoa, cool. custom. He goes, yeah, it's, it's, it's $28,000. I'm like, <laughs> whoa, what? <laughs> like, no, call this guy. <laughs> and he calls him. And I think the quote was like, I don't know, like 11. And like the big difference between like, do you really need custom? Get I some think custom kitchen kitchens belong in million dollar homes yes. plus million plus. Um, otherwise, there's beautiful like, uh, you know, regular, um, you know, shaker, shaker style cabinets, or glossy. glossy. Yeah, those can um, can work in almost any price point. Yeah. And but I'm seeing a lot more people that are doing higher end, you know, um, what do you call them? Like faces on the cabinets mm -hmm. um, these days in order to, to attract a little extra attention, but just, just know that you're going to, you're paying for that. Yep. And uh, again, leaning on your the, realtor. The, and the, and the impact isn't there. I'm sorry to say I've seen every type of, you know, as, as long as it's new. Yeah. Um, you, the, I'm sorry. The impact isn't there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Window coverings. Uh, people over renovate by adding window. Have you ever seen? Yeah. yeah. I see some people that will literally spend money on window coverings for a fix and flip. Yeah. You don't need to. No, <clears throat> definitely. It's not expensive. That's one of those ones that I almost feel like it doesn't matter the situation. Don't do window coverings. Yeah. They are so fucking expensive. Yeah. They're very expensive. Even yeah. for the cheapest. Yeah. And it's almost expected. Like I feel like um, when even like even when you buy, I don't know, I feel like 
it's expected that when you purchase a new home that you need to like yeah. get your window coverings done. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, moving bathrooms or bathroom fixtures. <sighs> Sometimes it makes sense to, uh, well, Adam and Vanessa there, they, they actually swallowed a bedroom. Yeah. Not literally. <laughs> <laughs> they weren't feeling well for a while. <laughs> <laughs> Upset tummy. <laughs> Um, they, they got rid of a bedroom to add a large, um, master ensuite. Yeah. And they were able to fit a bathtub, a soaker tub and a stand stand up shower and also have a walkthrough closet, which again, in that neighborhood, it made sense. Yeah, it worked. And that was the advice of, um, Natherine because that's what other houses had and it made sense that that's a tough one it's a very tough one whether you should get rid of a, a, a bedroom or not but more so about just like sometimes people will like will like i don't like where the tub is right now so i'm going to move it no. the amount like taking that out removing the wall that was there um getting the plumber in going downstairs removing all the plumbing and all the the the, the, the supply lines and the drain lines and everything else it adds up mm-hmm. um Sometimes it's just easier just to, to work with what's existing, unless, of course, you have to move it, yeah. right? Yeah. But um, definitely be be very careful when it comes to moving bathrooms um, or bathroom fixtures because you don't like the configuration, unless, of course, you absolutely need to. Um, and then there's there's adding bedrooms as well. Is, is it right to add a bedroom into the basement or is it uh, just keep yeah. it open? Yeah, uh, this one will depend on your um, comparables and what what your audience wants. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, replacing the furnace if it still works. Depends how old it is because it can. It'll be something. Okay, so here's the thing: it, if it's really old but it's still working fine, it'll be something that's brought up after they do their inspection. And they might try to use it, but even though it's working, it's fine. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, but. The lifespan yeah. of a furnace is 25 years. What's, what's, the, what's the point in which you are expected to replace it? What if it's 15 years old? No. What if it's 20 years old? No. When do you replace it? What's yeah. the, I, I'd say that if it's, like at the, if it's at the expiration, but you're like, no, it's fine. It still works great. Look. Right. If you feel but, confident that their home inspector is going to be able to do to to check it and it works properly and it's been serviced and, and it looks good. And then, then it's fine. As long as the, the ducts have been cleaned, mm-hmm. um, then it should be fine. But, uh, if it's 10 years old and it looks dirty, don't, don't go over replacing it. Cause that's a $7,000 expenditure right there. Um, or maybe it's not the best efficiency for that, you know, $900,000 house. It's a tough one, yeah. tough one, but I, I, that's, I'd lean towards no, if you don't, if you don't have to. Uh, Paul says we were in a 1975 home on the weekend. Original furnace still worked. What would you do? That's uh, if, if 49 I w- years old. Yeah. If I <laughs> if I were gutting that and and yeah. renovating it, I'd replace it. Yeah. That's yeah. yeah. <laughs> do you still have to like um, shovel the coal into it <laughs> before you go to bed? <laughs> um, uh, moving the furnace room. No, not not unless you're like doing something. People do it. Yeah, people do it. They don't like to configure. Well, you know, you've seen some basements where you've got that curb in the middle of it, right? You got that. Um, you get the low bearing wall, but it's on top of like one of the the concrete curbs right down the middle of the, mm-hmm. um, uh, the basement. And like, how do you do it? Do you do do you? You better have them. So you put a telepost in and then remove the curb and then you move the, the furnace room because the configuration's crappy because you can't get a bedroom down there because the other comps have a bedroom. You better have a massive spread and you better be making a massive improvement on the house to justify that. If this you don't. It just sounds like desirability. It, yeah. That, it, yeah. I mean, like, yeah, you better have huge, huge spread and huge plans to make a major jump in the ARV on that property. Talked about adding beams or or, or load supporting uh, supporting walls, but also like removing walls in general. I mean, most people have the general understanding or the general expectation of having open concept these days. Mm-hmm. So removing the wall between the kitchen and the living room is yeah. normally a, is. It, I think if you can, that I would. 
but removing- it's okay to have a beam though. Like you don't, if like, you don't necessarily need to have that fresh, like completely up, put up the LVL. Like you don't need to do the whole thing. It's okay to have a beam, but I would definitely open up as much as Which you is can. the other one was spending extra money on having the flush, mm-hmm. you know, um, no, the flush beam. Is that what they call it? The hidden beam? Yeah. It's, it costs extra money. Yeah. Again, it's going to depend on, but that's where a lot of people, they just do like, oh, I just, I don't like the look of it. So I'm just going to put it up. I'm yeah. going to hide it and spend extra beams 3, are beautiful. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> um, adding a kitchen to the basement is another one that a lot of people um, over renovate. Um, light fixtures. Mm-hmm. <laughs> do you go with the Home Depot boob lights? No. Or do you go with the flush mounts? Or do you go with 4,000 pot lights? Not four thousand, but <laughs> remember that house? Yeah, I do. I think if you guys know what I'm talking about, there was a there was a fix and flip uh, fail in Edmonton uh, a year or two ago. I think lights are. Um, I think light fixtures um, just go in the middle. <laughs> go in the middle. I see some people try too hard, and some people cheap out. And like you can spot a cheap light fixture. Well, I can at least. Like I I notice the the cheap ones, and it's like ah. Eh. But like then some people go overboard and it's um, not necessary. Yeah. Yeah. Mirrors. Mirrors. Again, I know it doesn't sound like much like what we're talking about over renovating right now, but mirrors is a huge expenditure. Yeah. All I'll say is pick an appropriate sized one. That's what bugs me the most about mirrors. Yeah. It's when they're not the right size. True. <laughs> and making sure that it lines up with the light fixture. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I find that when we we put our big our budget towards like the exterior and the furnace and the windows and the roof and the kitchen and then everyone's like oh I'll put two thousand dollars for like handles and mirrors and light fixtures and then it, they always go over always go over budget on the last little stuff because you don't realize the door stops the handles the hinges the um oh, fuck the, the light fixtures and stuff like that, the mirrors, you think it's just going to go, go go grab a $20 one over at Home Depot and it never works out to be like that. And that's where people uh, over renovate quite a bit. Um, the last one, I, I mentioned this a second ago, was replacing windows. Mm-hmm. When to replace windows, when to not replace windows. It could be anywhere from ten to $20,000. Mm-hmm. And even more, if you're going to get a, more custom windows, if you're going to be opening the, the hole bigger uh, for a larger window, it, if you're going to be cutting the concrete and you need an engineer's, uh, stamp on it. It's like, yeah, that's another one. That right there, we're looking at twenty thousand dollars for um, for windows. Light fixtures can be anywhere, you know, could be plus or minus a thousand. Uh, mirrors can be five hundred. Uh, adding a bathroom, five thousand. Adding a kitchen, five thousand. Removing walls and adding beams and such, you know, at five thousand. Um, are you keeping track here? You should get your calculator out. Hang on. Should I get my calculator out? You gonna make me do this seriously? Okay. Windows twenty thousand, light fixtures thousand, five hundred for uh, what did I say? Uh, mirrors. It could be plus or minus. Uh, adding a bathroom five thousand. Uh, adding a kitchen five thousand. Removing walls and adding beams, etc. Five thousand. Mm-hmm. Adding a fireplace thousand. Moving the furnace room couple thousand bucks like redoing the ducting and everything else let's say two thousand uh oh then you'd have to move like the plumbing lines mm-hmm. and i was gonna too. say it's probably oh, more than that god let's add another three thousand yeah shoot okay yeah uh replacing the furnace it still works seven thousand uh moving bathrooms or bathroom fixtures three thousand um adding window coverings jesus that's like twelve thousand Window coverings, I swear to God, when you're buying rental properties, this is a separate topic, but like Jesus Murphy, always plan for window coverings when you're buying a rental property. Uh, I'm going to say 2000 Uh, Yeah, I mean, if you're cheaping out. If you're cheaping out. Okay, so another 2000 yeah, Fix Well, like one, our, our one uh, front window is like 3000 <laughs> Kitchen cabinets, well, the difference between 12000 and 28000 You spend an extra $14,000 there. Uh, closets, 4,000. If you got to redo, oh yeah, I see a lot of people spending money on 4,000 for closets. Shelving, 2,000. Uh, feature walls, uh, 1,500 
for a, for a, a, a mediocre, like decent uh, feature wall. Um, adding an addition, I'm just going to ignore that one. And exterior. Exterior can be anywhere from, you know, just painting the stucco on the front, painting the stucco all the way around, two to 3,000, 4,000. Um, and then doing full, you know, vinyl siding all the way around can be ten to 15,000. Plus, you got to redo the fascia and soffits and everything else. Well, an extra $15,000. Anyone have an idea of where I'm at on how you can overspend and over renovate? The total of the examples we gave was about $93,000. There's $93,000 in extra funds or extra money that you can spend on a renovation just by not paying attention by over renovating. And this is why so many people fuck up with fix and flips mm -hmm. is because they think, oh, I should probably do this or I would want to see this in my own house. Yeah, let's just add that. Let's just add that. It's not a big deal. It's only an extra 800 bucks, 700 bucks, 200 bucks, 300 bucks. And then what ends up happening is you get to the very end of it and you realize, oh shit, I over renovated. So um, moral of the story, I think the most important thing is, is make sure you're doing your research ahead of time. Make sure you're working with an investor focused realtor who can give you the comparables ahead of time to know what's, it's not about what budget you want. It's about the budget that is required in order to renovate it to the same standards and finishings of what another fix and flip has done, um, that you are trying to compare yourself to, mm -hmm. to justify your sale price. And you want to get it done as quickly as possible so that nothing else sells in the meantime and that your reference, uh, your reference comparables are still relevant when you go put it on the market, then you're going to need to, it's important as well. Nat yesterday when she was presenting and she was talking about how to choose the, the after or the, the sale price and how she does her research, she keeps her finger on the pulse throughout the renovation, mm -hmm. checking in to see if anything else has sold recently mm -hmm. to make sure that you're not, maybe something's changed. Maybe someone has sold something similar um, recently and it sold for less then maybe that's the decision. Like if you still have time, let's not do that feature wall. Let's not add that fireplace. Where can we save money? So just focusing, I'd say, making sure you're staying in close contact with your investor focused realtor who understands fix and flips, that's going to help you determine whether you should or you shouldn't on this list of items. Yeah. So you don't overspend. And that wraps up today's show. Awesome. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Have a wonderful Monday. Make it awesome. We'll see, you see you guys you at 5 p.m. Oh, tonight. Yeah. yeah for the uh, the tax prep uh, tips Sounds with good. Uh, Steve Sonoff. See you then. Fingo. Bye now. Thanks for listening to the Real Estate Investing Morning Show. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Interested in being a guest on the show? Send us an email to info at reimorningshow.com.